Should you start with the arbitrage strategy or should you start buying real estate? Which strategy is better? Well, let's jump right into the five benefits of owning real estate and then we will go into the main benefits of arbitrage and by the end, we're gonna settle the score once and for all. So when it comes to owning real estate, the reality is this will always be the best strategy to create long-term wealth. And my goal for all of you guys, if I had to choose between you owning 10 properties or having 10 properties that you arbitrage, I would of course prefer that you would own those properties. Now, the reason people get into arbitrage is because they have limited capital or maybe their primary goal is to replace their nine to five as soon as possible. When it comes to arbitrage, it is the most effective way to replace a nine to five, but owning the real estate is what's gonna help you create long-term wealth. So let's go over the five benefits of owning. The first benefit is cash flow. This is the monthly profit after all expenses. Then you have appreciation. This is the increase in value over time. And when it comes to appreciation, you have two types of appreciation. You have natural market appreciation. This is just what the market does over time. Buy a property today for say 500,000. In 10 years, it's going to be worth over a million dollars. Then you have what we call forced appreciation. This is where you buy a property that needs a lot of work, rehab it, and you now force the value up. Number three, we have depreciation. In short, you are allowed to write off physical building over a certain amount of time, only making most or all of your cash flow tax-free. Number four, there are a lot of tax benefits when you are a business owner and even more benefits when you are a real estate investor and even more benefits when those properties that you own are short-term rentals. And number five, you have mortgage pay down. Your Airbnb guests are paying down your mortgage, only increasing your equity and net worth. So to summarize, owning real estate, in my experience, is always going to be the strategy that allows you to build long-term wealth, and it should be your goal over the long-term period. Now let's go over why people decide often to start with the arbitrage strategy over owning. I'll give you my example. When I started back in March of 2017, I already had four properties, four units that I owned, and so I started with that low-hanging fruit. It wasn't until 2019 when I started the arbitrage strategy. My goal goal was to replace my wife's nine to five. I knew I needed three Airbnbs to replace my wife's nine to five, and we didn't have the capital to go and buy three properties. So I went the arbitrage route. And again, that was beneficial because I didn't have to put any down payments, any closing costs, and I was able to scale faster. The reality is with the same amount of money that I would buy one, I could arbitrage five and make five times more the cash flow per month. So the benefits of arbitrage, of course, number one is cash flow. This is strictly a cash flow strategy that's going to help you get to replacing your nine to five faster than owning. Number two is you're going to get a lot of tax deductions, write-offs, and benefits. Not as many as when you own it, but you're still running a business. And as a business owner, you get a lot of tax deductions and write-offs when you are operating Airbnbs with the arbitrage strategy. One thing that a lot of people I feel miss out on is you're going to get more experience running, for example, five Airbnbs on the arbitrage strategy versus running one with the ownership strategy. I always say the money is great from Airbnbs, but what's even more powerful is who you become in the process. There's going to be a lot of peaks and valleys, a lot of ups and downs with your business, regardless of what business you start. And as you overcome those challenging times and you come up with solutions, you are learning marketing, sales, customer service, how to build a team, a system, how to work on the business, not in the business. Again, you're going to get more experience implementing the arbitrage strategy because you're running more Airbnbs than operating less Airbnbs ownership strategy. In the end, what's most important is for you to actually just pick one and get started. You know, often I meet people that they can't decide if they should sublease or if they should buy. So they end up sitting on the sidelines waiting for a perfect moment, which is never going to come because perfect moments don't come. They are created when you declare it, when you create a plan of action and you take action on that vision. So my recommendation is whatever you're able to do, just get started and focus on progress, not perfection. Do what you can with what you have where you are. If you are not in a position to buy, start with arbitrage. Build up your capital from arbitrage, then take that money and park it into real estate by buying real estate. By then you'll already have experience operating your Airbnbs. There's two things that you got to keep in mind 
mind when you are getting started with either of these strategies. One of those is that you still have to run your numbers on air DNA to make sure that the property is going to be profitable. I see a lot of people who message me on Instagram making the mistake of finding a property that looks great, has great curb appeal, renovated, maybe in a good location, but maybe that area is saturated. So you have to know how to look at the data and how to look at the projected performance over the next 12 months based on the last 12 months performance of other similar properties in the area. And number two, which is the most important and first thing you should do is verify what the regulation is in that city. You don't want to go through all the time, energy and money of launching an Airbnb just for it to be short lived. So again, make sure you do your due diligence, verify that you can actually get a permit in the city by contacting the building department, run the numbers on air DNA. And only then should you move forward with either of these strategies. And remember, why not do both? Who says that you have to pick between owning and subleasing? Again, I have eight properties that I own and seven that I sublease and three that I manage for other people. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future videos. And make sure you guys follow me on Instagram where I post content every single day. I'll see you guys on the next one.